Welcome to the team call for November 16th. Look at me knowing the date and everything today. Um, okay, we're going to go over success club points, and these points are a bigger deal even than normal because it's November. It's Q4. Okay. Ooh, and I have to tell you guys something too. Okay, so I ordered those team shirts, right? And then I got a message last week. Don't worry, it's all good. But I got a message last week and the dude's like, oh, by the way, I know you're supposed to get your order in this week, but we don't have enough of the shirts that you ordered. And I was like so heartbroken. And then I was like, you know what, dude, I paid and you promised me shirts. So I don't care if you have to upgrade because you made a mistake. That's not my problem. So they did. They gave us better shirts. They look a little different, but they're beautiful. They're black v-neck t-shirts. It says, you can call me coach on the front in white. And then on the back in white is the Fit Republic logo. Seriously, guys, they do look even better. The quality of shirt is even better. So I took care of you. <laughs> And they will be shipping this week, so I will have them like either end of this week or next week. So super excited about that. Um, look at Tamara with 16 Success Club points. Wow, awesome. Um, and it's halfway through the month, guys. We still have plenty of time. Okay, um, Courtney at 13, Lindsay at 12, Michelle at 12, Isabel at 12, Ashley at 10, April at 10, and Anna Maud at 10. Awesome, awesome job, guys. At Success Club 5, we have Taylor, Rhoda, Carrie, Sarah, Carmen, Amanda, Dana, Tinsley, Lena, Victoria, Candice, Roseanne, Julie, Bianca, Anne, and Tracy. You know what's so exciting, guys? I'm seeing names of brand new coaches up here. That is amazing. If you're a brand new coach and your name is on any one of these boards, you should feel immensely proud of yourself. That's freaking incredible. Um, I'm totally going through all the names tonight. So at Success Club 4, we have Brad, ha ha, um, Buffy, Katie, Nikki, Morgan, Tristan, Lizzie, Shelby, Scott, Amanda, Jamie, Ashley, Basilia. Um, and then at Success Club 3, we have Allie, Taryn, Steph, Kate, Tamara, Karina, Nicole, Jenny, Oh, sorry, I went into Success Club 2. That's okay. Um, <laughs> Success Club 2 continued. Whitney, Leslie, Lisa, Yolanda, Jenny, Candice, Andrea, Tamara, Erin, Christine, Corey, Shyla. Holy crap, this list is long. Tara, <laughs> Carrie, Megan, Tani, Chelsea, Kristen, Joanna, Raylene, Alex, Shauna, Amy, Jessica, Autumn, Melissa, Jacqueline, Amanda, I totally feel like I should like make a song of this, you know? Um, Tara Rhoda, oh, I thought she was on the other one. Hmm. Janine, Rebecca, Pamela, Lauren, Lindsay, Linda, Tiffany, April, Sarah, Alex, Amy, Deborah, Lori, Cooper, Aggie, Melissa, Michelle, and at Success Club One, <laughs> Rachel, Kathy, Whitney, Marlin, who is Cheryl's hubby, and Sarah, awesome, awesome job, guys. We still, like I said, we have so much time still before the end of the month. And I know that a lot of people who are on the Close to Success board are totally going to hit Success Club. So go for it. Have the right mentality and the right mindset. Even if you're at Success Club Zero, you still absolutely have an opportunity to hit Success Club. Um, just want to talk a little bit real quick about um, our strategy going into December. So hit Success Club first, obviously, in November. That's your priority. If you're already at Success Club and looking forward into December, my recommendation, what I'm gonna be doing, is I'm gonna hit Success Club in December for a challenge group in January. 
Okay, so start inviting in December for a challenge group that begins in January. My value proposition, and I stole, I fully admit I stole this from my coach, Anna Maud. Um, I steal good ideas all the time. And her value proposition was give yourself a gift this Christmas. And I thought that was just freaking amazing. Um, there is also something to take note of. A lot of insurance companies will cover fitness products. So if you're in Canada um, and have Green Shield, for example, it depends on your benefits program. Like I don't know what your benefits program is, but with my husband's on like the police service benefits program, they'll totally cover Shakeology and Beachbody workout programs. I know Blue Cross, um, the police service used to be with Blue Cross and it was the same deal with them. So you can't tell a customer what they have. You can't tell a customer like what their insurance plan looks like, right? But you can say that, um, that it's possible, right? So I'm gonna share a post that I'm gonna do on my page about that and it's not telling people like, you can do this for sure, but it's like, check it out, you might have the option. Plus, if they haven't used it, guys, then that money just goes away in January. Like they don't get any benefit out of it if they haven't used it yet. So that's totally something to take into consideration. And also with people that you're already talking to um, who have said like it's cost prohibitive or whatever, talk to them about that too. Do you have a benefits plan? It's possible that you may be able to get this covered. Um, okay. So I'm going to jump into the call. I think we've got Arno with us now. We do. There he is. Hi, Arno. Um, okay, I'm going to kick us off first a little bit here. But can I just tell you, I'm like a little girl right now. I'm so excited to have Arno here. This guy has lit a fire under my butt. He has made a huge, huge difference in my coaching journey. And I'm like, I'm going to cry. I'm ridiculous excited to have him talking to my team. Um, okay. So I'm not going to talk for very long, but the whole like premise of this call is increasing your confidence as a coach. And I'm going to say this, this is kind of a bold statement, but I truly believe that the, that the difference between coaches who like take off right out the gate and coaches who are a little slower starting, I really believe that a lot of that difference is in confidence. And I wasn't, like, I didn't hit Success Club 20, 30, 40 in my first year as a coach, right? I had a lot of confidence building to do. So I think this is a super, super crucial topic um, that we need to get into, into, honestly, a lot more often. So what I'm going to talk about a little bit is changing your state before you do your beach body work or really any time. Um, and we have been talking about this consistently, right? But something that I haven't been talking about is how to, so say for example, I'll just give you an example. So say for example, like when you're a brand new coach, do you remember that like anxiety feeling when you posted about your first challenge group and when you sent your first few invites to people who you didn't really care about their opinion because you were too nervous to send them to people <laughs> who you did care about, right? Um, so that like that fear is what often holds us back from doing what we need to do as a coach. So my mentor, Barbie, when I started as a coach, it was like pulling teeth to get me to talk about the business opportunity. It, seriously, I, I know she got frustrated with me because I was like, totally doing the challenge groups and it was so fun. I no longer had any sort of anxiety talking about challenge groups, inviting, posting about that stuff, fitness all day, every day. But talking about the coaching opportunity, like I had fear. And so the one day we were having a call and she's like, do you want this or don't you? I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to go back to work. And she's like, figure out what that fear is and step into it. 
step into it. If you're procrastinating, if you like start your power hour, right? Say you start your power hour and you like get in the Fit Republic team page and then you go visit like the Canada coaches page. And then you go see my page and see what's going on with me, right? And then the hour is done and you haven't invited anybody. Why is that? It's fear. It's fear. So step into it, figure it out, think about it, whether this applies to you for challenge groups or for the business opportunity, posting, inviting, whatever it applies to, step into that a little bit and ask yourself what it is. And for me still sometimes, like if I get my heart stomped on by somebody who tells me that, you know, I don't really care about helping people. I only care about making money, which happened, which has happened in the past, you know, I get this fear of rejection and of judgment from other people, right? But when that happens, it's time to really step into that and to remember we're in this to help other people. And if every, every so often there is somebody who makes a negative comment or those days when we get like five no's in a row, those days happen, right? That stuff is not about you. And you can't let that hold you back from helping all of those other people. Who need your help so step one is if you're feeling hesitation to do your power hour and do what you need to do step into your fear figure it out switch your mindset right realize that you're in it to help other people and then put some really good music on and jump around for a little bit put some makeup on so you feel fabulous and go Actually, I have been putting on makeup a lot more often for that reason. I feel better. Even if no one sees my face, I just feel fabulous then. I'm fierce. <laughs> okay. I am going to turn it over to Arno. And if I, I found you. Okay. You are unmuted, my friend. Welcome to the Fit Republic team call. Wow. Thank you very much, Rosa. That's uh. <clears throat> Quite the introduction. Good to see everyone. Uh, it's good to see that I recognize a few of you, and a few of you I'll be I'll I'll be getting to know you a, a lot more. You know, as Rosa was talking, I, it, it took me back to a meeting that we had at the Calgary Marriott. It was in the lobby. Remember? I, I was remember. On my Facebook to pull up that picture, but Barbie Decker was there as well, and we sat down, and Rosa was very much in a place where I would guess most of you are which um, I won this. This has helped me transform my, not only my body, but also my confidence. And now I'm in that place where I need to transfer from being excited about it to doing something about it. And I think at that time, Rosa might have been a diamond, possibly an emerald. But obviously I met with her because, you know, I saw potential in her and I saw confidence, but also you know, heard what Barbie was saying on, on some of the mission and, and the thing that she wanted to do that might, might or might not have included the fit republic in the vision, right? See, at that time, when you see Rosa now, you see a, like you said, a fierce, confident, you know, leader of fit republic. Where she was, if you, you know, if you rewind a little bit into her journey, it wasn't always like that. So she talked about confidence, and that's something that I am very familiar with because I used to be very unfamiliar with. And I would dare say that most people are not born with confidence. Most people don't have this ego that is healthy enough to take constructive criticism. And most people are not strong enough in their beliefs to not let the outside world deter them from what they have to do, okay? So if you read the definition of confidence, I looked it up, he says, there's many definitions, but the ones that I think is most pertinent to what we do as coaches, what you do as coaches is a feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities or qualities. You might say of, of someone, you know, like Taryn that I see here, she's brimming with confidence, right? She's smiling. She's excited. She might have had a long day. You will never know, right? Like Shalene Johnson always says, it's like, don't let them see you sweat. It might be a completely crazy situation at work, at school, 
at home right now, but don't let them, don't let them see you sweat, right? So I want to take you guys um, on, a, on a little journey and share quickly, and then, and then I want to share some points. And then, Rosa, I'm going to open it up to a few and ask some pointed questions uh, to some people. But I want to take you back to, um, it, was at the begin, it was at the end of 2003. Uh, some of you remember that the end of 2003 was actually when kind of the WorldCom and the Enron scandals happened, and it was a really rough time in business where, you know, you had the 2000 crash, then you had Enron, WorldCom. It was really rough for anybody that went to school for accounting or finance, and that's what I studied at university, and I went out and started looking for a job, and one of the jobs, literally the dream job came up. And I applied for it, so did a few other classmates of mine, and I applied for the job. It was in finance. It was working for a major corporation, and I thought, wow, this is going to be perfect. So I send in my resume. Uh, I get the interview. I sit down. I, I talk, and I feel like I just hit it out of the ballpark, right? Ever have those situations where you feel so confident, right? You're so confident. And it was at the ripe uh, young age of 20, uh, 22 at the t- 21 at the time. And, and, and I was really excited to get, you know, my start in the industry. And I didn't get a phone call back for about a month. I kept calling, no answer. Um, email, no answer. And finally, I get a piece of letter, letterhead. Just a really neat letter. It says the company name and literally has like, three lines and then he says thank you blah 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 vp of hr and in that and in that and i need to get that letter because that letter was a pivoting point in my life that letter those three sentences basically said you haven't been selected there's someone else better than you at least that's how i interpreted it okay if you've ever gotten a rejection letter that's how it feels okay uh, you, you haven't been selected. Someone else has been selected. Thank you for your interest. And when you are just graduating and you have all these thoughts and dreams of conquering the world, of you know, climbing the corporate ladder, doing all these things, it doesn't feel good. And it shakes your confidence. As I look at it from a coach perspective, you put yourself out there all the time, right? And when you think back to when your friend told you that you're wasting your time, that DVD workouts don't work, or you become a coach and your mom tells you you're pretty much signing up with a scam, uh, or you're wasting your money, that's kind of how it feels, okay? So I'm going to be very real and authentic with you and kind of talk about the raw emotions, but but then also talk about how do you get out of it and how have other coaches gotten out of it right see that same coach that i met with at the calgary marriott downtown i remember um got some it wasn't necessarily rejection it was yes i believe in you no i don't believe in you okay and and maybe rosa has shared this before if if she has great if she hasn't i think it proves a point Rosa, see, um, one, of their, one of her very first people that basically got her to Diamond was a lot of family members. And some of those same family members that helped her out early in her journey are the same ones, unfortunately, whether they knew it or not, disappointed her. Anybody have family members that have disappointed them, right? Anybody. Whether it's family members that tell you, yes, Okay, Janice, I can't wait to join your challenge group. And they say, well, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's too much, right? Or whether, you know, Christy, it's someone that tells you, you know what, I'm already a fitness and health co- uh, you know, coach. Might as well sign up for a coach. And you sit down with them and you pour into them and you give them so much value. And then they don't return your calls. Has that happened to any of you, right? See, that was the situation I was in. I was like this young guy and I'm excited and I'm going to get my career started. I poured into this interview and by the way, not only did I not get it, but a classmate that I was with that I considered myself far 
at, at least analytically superior when it comes to financial analysis, got the job. And so I was at a pivot where I needed to make a decision. See, I see that, especially in coaching, you're doing something that most people are not willing to do. Otherwise, we wouldn't have an obesity epidemic, right? But then at the same time, I know that because you're doing something that not many people are willing to do, that's where the opportunity lies. Let me repeat that. Because you're doing something that most people are not willing to do, that's where the opportunity lies, right? So fast forward from when I get that rejection letter. A month later, I'm listening to the radio. And guess who's advertising? They're advertising for a customer service agent position, a French-speaking customer service position. And it's the same company that sent me that rejection letter. Again, I was faced with a choice. See, it had been a month where I'm applying and nothing opens up. And the first thing that I said, I said a few choice words about that company as I'm driving, listening to that ad. And then I said, well, you know what? What do I have to lose, right? You remember telling yourself when you first looked at the coaching opportunity, you went through the same doubts that your parents or your best friends told you. They're just a reflection of the doubts that you have yourself already, right? And it's normal to have those doubts, right? But then you got, you got to a point, whether it's, you know, it's Victoria, you're sharing your story and your coaches just got started, or Rosa shared enough stories or she shared enough of her journey to make you believe that you can do it too, whatever it is, we decide to say, I don't have anything to lose. I'm going to try it out. I don't have anything to lose. I bet quite a few of you said that to yourselves. So that's what I said. I said, I don't have anything to lose. I mean, they might have sent me a rejection letter. I might be completely coming at an entry-level position where I wanted to sell myself as a financial analyst with a fancy title. I'm going to start as a customer service representative. I've got a four-year degree. I've got internship. I was in student government. You name it, I did it. And I'm going to start as a customer service agent. I said, what do I have to lose? Here are a few things that I looked at. I looked at that company's growth and I looked at what that company's not only growth up to now was, but then I looked at what the opportunity, the future growth is going to be. So as you evaluate Beachbody, take away everything, okay? I'm going to talk to you as business people, okay? If you take away everything and look at, you know, where Beachbody has been, okay, from 45,000 coaches in 2011 to, you know, closing in on 400,000 coaches only in the U.S. and Canada with a potential, at least that we see, of 10 million coaches between the U.S. and Canada. You do the math. Where is the opportunity? So I looked at the growth before. Then I looked at the potential. And I said, you know what? I might be coming out as a customer service agent. I know what I'm capable of doing. I'm willing to work hard on my, on my skills. And then number three, I know that if you just give me a chance, I will prove to you what I'm capable of doing. Okay? You got to take things as a challenge. And that's how I took it. I knew that I'm doing what most people are not willing to do. Come in entry level, go back to a company that rejected them, okay? But I saw this as an opportunity. I said, you know what? When the going gets tough, guess what? The tough has to get going. I needed it. I needed it bad. And however it was going to happen, I was going to make it happen. Nobody was going to help me, hand me a great life on a silver platter. Nobody. And then I told myself, wait, if you keep doing what you're doing right now, is that, is that going to help you achieve your goals? Is that actually going to help you get closer to what you want to do in life? Or is it just a dead end, right? Lesson number one is you need to learn how to turn a bad day or a bad week into good data, right? You need to learn how to turn a bad day a bad week, a bad year. Some of us might be having a bad year, okay? 2015 might not be a year, okay? But you need to turn it into good data. You need to humble yourself enough to say, I need to turn this into good data. It doesn't mean that the door is closed. I might go around. Maybe there's a different door. Maybe I need to go over that, right? Maybe I need to go under that, right? Fast forward, I, I joined that company. I started as a, you know, like I said, a customer service representative. Within six months, I was made, you know, a, a, a supervisor. 
Within a few, within three more months, I was made a manager. Within another, another couple of months, I started in the sales teams. With, with, within another month, literally, I, I had, I think, the fastest promotion. Like, I had a week promotion. I was, I was like an associate manager. Within a week, I was a regional manager. And then after like nine months, I was a regional director. Like, and it, so all these added up to where I am now. It would not have happened if I was humble enough. You need to be humble enough and you need to challenge what you believe are bad, what is bad data and turn that into good, bad days into good data, right? And so I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanted to share that because I very much understand, number one, that confidence is not something you just gain overnight. You've got to work at it. Kind of a tree, you've got to keep chopping at it, right? And you're going to have storms. You're going to have doubters. You're going to have people that tell you you're wasting your time and it's not easy. But the more you do it, the more you put yourself out there, the better the outcome is going to be. Okay. So like I said, he led me to where I am now. I want to share a couple more stories that I think are hugely important. And, and, and what I want to really talk about is how confidence is tied to credibility, like how you can increase the level of trust and credibility actually increases your confidence, okay? Um, the first thing is, it's a journey, right? I'm talking about a journey, it's a continuum. You cannot expect it to just happen overnight. Much like Rosa, she's learned so many things along the way and she's sharing things here and there, but a lot of that came through trial and error. It came through just putting herself out there and sometimes completely failing or sometimes completely doing extremely well. And yes, part of it is jumping off and building your, way, your wings on the way down. Think about it. She's uh, working for Pure Later and she's an executive, you know, management executive making a healthy six-figure income and she decides, you know what? I'm going to build my beach body business. I know what's possible. She made sure that she took care of her, you know, of her family, right? Chris is there, has a very stable job, saved everything. But she knew that unless I do it, nobody owns my business more than I do. Barbie Decker doesn't own it more. You know, Carl doesn't own it more. I need to make it happen, right? I need to absolutely make it happen, okay? So let's talk about the journey. And part of the journey is, and I've got a few notes, part of the journey is that imperfections, let's talk about imperfections, okay? Many times you just, you know, how many of you type up a Facebook post and you type it up and you type it like five, six, seven different times? Anybody just raise your hand. If you're not raising your hand, you know what? Tell the truth, okay? Or how many of you take a picture and you take it at least 10 times? I'll admit, the latest picture that I posted, I took at least 12. And I'm a guy, okay? And I can only imagine with all the ladies that are on here. I want to make sure that my baby girl is looking, you know, okay in the background. You can go to my profile. You can look at that picture. But it took at least 12 tries of taking pictures. And it's okay. It's okay that, to know that imperfections are part of the journey, okay? I want to share two stories from right here at Beachbody that will show you that imperfections are part of the journey. The first one is uh, P90X. So some of you might have you know, heard about P90X. We literally spent $2 million testing it out. Testing it out, okay? In the meantime, everybody was telling Carl that he's what? Crazy, right? Like what? You're gonna wanna put this crazy workout in people's living room? Like, are you out of your mind? People don't do that at gyms. What makes you think that they'll do it in their basement by themselves with no personal trainer? You are nuts. Clue number one, if people have told you that you're nuts, you're on the right track, okay? You're on the right track. I think P90X and Tony and Carl have done pretty well for themselves, right? People are gonna tell you you're nuts, right? And we tried so many different things left and right, left and right, and it's interesting. The thing that changed things for us, okay, is when you look at those infomercials, you gotta be willing to test so, so many things and go through the imperfections until you find what works for you. The thing that actually worked for us is two things. Number one, posting like a bunch of before and afters. Obviously, that gets people hooked. Number two was when we filmed, it wasn't highly produced. 
you could see people actually record and you see the REC red button, red dot button on the top right, that changed the game for us because people knew inherently, subconsciously maybe that these are real people that are filming themselves in their basements or living rooms or whatever, right? That are putting themselves out there and they're showing their authentic self, authentic self, right? Authenticity is hugely important as part of building your own confidence. So as people are recording themselves using a camcorder, working out in their living rooms, subconsciously the viewers go, oh, I can do that myself in my living room. There's no difference between that person and me. Next thing you know, they're buying and they're finishing and they're doing it, right? And so understand that you have got to put yourself out there and it's not going to be perfect and you've got to, you've got to just know that imperfections are part of what you need to do in order to build the confidence. The second story is this. Um, you guys all know, you know, Sean T, he did hip hop apps. That was his first program, right? After P90X, we start, you know, kind of it had run its course and we're like, we need to come up with something new. We need to come up with something that doesn't, that doesn't involve any, any weights, okay? Some of you might have heard the story. And, and Carl basically was searching for a trainer that is just going to, like, kill people in their living rooms, right? Like, just, like, crush them and, like, do a ton of plyometrics and no weights involve all body. And Sean T heard about it, right? Sean T and Tony and everybody else was, was already part of it. But Sean T went, you know what? I'll try it. Okay, so have you guys watched hip hop abs? Have you have any has anybody seen hip hop abs? Has anybody done hip hop abs? Okay, put Insanity Asylum right next to hip hop abs, and then look at Sean T when he's in hip hop abs, and then the asylum. Is there a little bit of a difference there between the two? Okay, is there? I mean, it's like night and day. Well, what we knew of Sean T was hip hop abs. He's fun, he's colorful, he's dancing around. He seems like just this fun, you know, fun, upbeat workout. Then you take Insanity and you go, that guy, and I bought Insanity, that guy is a monster. Like, I, don't, I hate that guy, right? And a few choice words that you, you share. Do you think that Sean T went from hip hop abs, that persona, to Insanity like that? Do you think that he had a few imperfections that he had to smooth over? Think about this. Carl actually laughed when Sean T told him that he wants to volunteer, okay? Think, think about the impact that Sean T has had on you or your customers or the world in general, right? Sean T had to completely change the perception that he had of himself first, then the perception that Carl had of him and the whole company and say, hey, I'll throw my name in the hat. Think about this. If he had not done that, we probably could have found someone else, but could that have delivered the way Insanity, the way T25, the way Max 30, you name it, has, has delivered for you and your teams? Absolutely not. When you start thinking about what he's done, it, he, he understood that imperfections are part of the journey of building confidence. He didn't have confidence, but he said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to put my name in the hat. I'm asking you to give me a chance, right? Every time you put yourself out there and you put that before and after, where you put out there that you're looking for coaches, you're looking to build your team of, you know, of boss ladies, right? You're putting yourself out there, right? You're putting yourself out there. When you're typing it, you might sound very confident. Inside of you, you're like, oh, I hope that one uncle that thinks everything is like, a scam doesn't read this and doesn't post on this. If so, I'm so deleting his post, right? Right? And so, and so the act of actually like sharing that is confidence in itself, right? Everybody in some sort of way suffers from confidence. The real, the real winners do it whether they're confident or not. They just trust in the process and they just keep going at it, right? Every single day they keep going at it, right? Um, and you've got to admit it, you've got to own it and you can't make excuses and you have to be honest with yourself. You have to completely be honest with yourself, right? As a company, we've continued to grow, 
we, I always say we're a good company. We're not yet a great company. And part of the bridge between the two, the gap, is us, us owning the things that we do well, but also working on the things that we don't do well. And trust me, Rosa Friesen will tell you, we have leadership that give us constant feedback, right? And all of you give us constant feedback on how we can improve, right? But we don't, we don't take that as, man, they're criticizing us. No, they're actually helping us get better, right? We don't let that shake our confidence because we know, we know how we change people's lives, right? When you walk into the home office and you see hundreds and hundreds of before and afters, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're changing people's lives, right? When I see people that are able to afford more vacations or, you know, retire their spouse and all, all that stuff, by the way, Beach Buddy does not guarantee any income, right? Your hustle will though, right? Your boss lady hustle will completely uh, d determine that income. I know we're making a difference. So do you believe you're making a difference, right? Could you grow your confidence a little bit more? Confidence doesn't just wake up. Confidence does not come from personal development. It comes from applying that personal development, right? It comes from doing that personal development and, and doing the activity that the personal development that you're doing empowers you to do, right? And so I want to share five quick things that you can do to help you grow your trust, grow your credibility, and grow your confidence, right? And these are the five things that after talking to hundreds, thousands of coaches, you know, in the past four and a half years, I'm seeing all the top coaches do consistently, right? And so you do it, there's no question you'll get there. It's a matter of you doing it consistently. You knowing that beyond the shadow of a doubt, if I keep doing this, if I keep doing what I'm doing right now, one day I'll have a call with like 50 plus people of my own from my team, right? Because that's what Rosa wants. She wants you guys to multiply. She wants you guys to have your own teams, right? She wants you guys, Jeff next time, Jeff Donaldson, to have like 50 guys on the team, right? I'm just making sure that Jeff is paying attention, right? And it's like, it's like making sure that you understand that will help you get there, okay? So here are the five things, okay? Number one, as you're putting yourself out there, be authentic, right? Be authentic. And what he does, it's a lot easier to be yourself than to be someone else, right? It's a lot easier to be yourself than to be someone else. Every time you try to be someone else, if you try to be someone else today, in a couple of days, you gotta remember who you were today, and you gotta, you know, you gotta speak the same language, okay? Every time you bounce from one person, one persona to the other, it confuses people and they go, I'm not sure who you are. Like, are you this person or are you this person, right? Speak my language. And so being authentic is saying, this is who I am, this is what I do. Someone that completely changed their business, I remember this story, is this particular coach was a coach for six months, stuck at coach at, for six months, okay? Uh, if I remember right, she then became an, an, an Emerald, uh, was stuck at Emerald for like a year, and then got to Star Diamond and was stuck again, okay? So we're talking like a year and a half to two years just completely stuck, and then she started being herself. She started stopping to compare herself with other people, right? You guys might have heard of this coach, Amy Silverman. She's the number two coach in the whole network, right? So think about it. Are you being yourself? If I were to look at, at a week's worth of posts, right, um, on your social media, are they saying the same thing or are you taking me from here to there, right? It's like, I'm, I'm, are you being yourself, right? Only you can determine that. Um, number two, you know how you, you put out there, you know, that, you know, in your challenge group, for instance, you're telling your, your customers, you know, your challengers to work out and drink Shakeology and all that stuff, right? Discipline and confidence happens when nobody's watching you. Discipline and confidence happens when no one is watching you. It's easy enough to post on social media. It's another thing to do it consistently. And actually, the more you do it, the better you get and the easier it is to share with people, right? It's like the truth is just that. It's not uh, embellished. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not created. It's just that. It's the truth right? And so number two is you need to do 
what you tell your customers to do or challengers to do or coaches to do, right? Many leaders will say, gosh, why is my team not doing it? Mm, you want me to tell you or do you know already? You're not doing that which you're asking your people to do, right? <laughs> you need to do it yourself, right? That's number two. Number three is really, you know, in, in, you know same, within the same thinking is you need to be reliable and consistent, right? If you think about your business, if you were to open um, a Timmy's, right, or a Starbucks or a Subway or whatever, first of all, you're spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, right, to open up that franchise. You're probably there every single day, Monday to Saturday, maybe off Sunday, right? And you're reliable and you're consistent because you're open and you want people to come into your store, right? What makes it different for you as a, as a Beachbody coach? What makes it different for you as a beach body coach? Are you reliable and consistent? Do you have those business hours that people know that they can come to you and the doors are going to be open, right? With, with, with the you know, caveat that you're not going to be you know, open 24-7, but with those hours that you're open, do people know that, right? Are you consistent and are you reliable? Because as people, when you're consistent and reliable, people are going to people's confidence in you is going to grow. And as people's confidence in you grows, yours grows as well, right? Yours grows as well. Uh, number four, you need to be open to be willing and vulnerable, right? You need to just share. It's part of being authentic. You need to share. You need to be vulnerable. I think some of the best posts is when people say, hey, you know what? This is a struggle that I have. Do you have that struggle too? We've got a support group that can help you. This is who I am. Take me or leave me. That's who I am, right? I'm speaking my language. Hopefully, this language connects with you, right? Um, and then be, you know, always be learning is a fifth point, right? It's okay to, you know, to always learn. It's okay to always grow. It's okay to always want to push your boundaries, right? And I have a few examples that I know from Fit Republic that I wanted that I wanted to share. Um, is Michelle on? Rosa, I don't know if she's on, but um, Michelle, I remember when, when she began coaching, and these are examples um, that Rosa and I talked about. She lived, I think, in a, in a community that she feared judgment from. Who else struggles with that, right? Um, and so she, she basically looked fear in the face, and you know what? She posted the most vulnerable thing that she could do, right? And maybe she shared it already, but she talked about, you know, eating and food and her relationship, right, with food. Michelle, if you're on, kudos to you, right? Because it takes a very confident person to put it out there, right? And guess what? The moment you share something that is pretty heavy, all of a sudden everything else comes, it kind of comes easier for you, right? What about um, Anna Mode? Actually, you talked about her earlier, Rosa. Um, and some, you know, some of you know her, she jumped right in with challenge groups with no fears. She's, you know, with no fear, she's already a fitness girl. Um, but she was still hesitant to post, especially if you are someone that's already in fitness, you've already built this kind of persona, right? The people that are following you. Um, and she jumped right in, um, and she helped her French community, which I love that by the way, smart, smart. Um, I remember back in, I think it's two years ago, I told, I told Emily Robidas, it's like, why are you focused on English and French? Like, focus on just people that speak your language, French. She's an executive leader now. It's not a coincidence, right? She focused on one part, right? And, um, you, know, she, you know, she created a business and, and she's, you know, she's built some incredible, incredible people. And I guess her new coach, Isabel, if Isabel is on the call, Success Club 48 in her first month. That's amazeballs. Like it doesn't happen without Anna Mode having that confidence. Then all of a sudden when you have confidence, a beautiful thing that happens, you transfer that confidence to other people that are in your team, right? You can easily transfer that confidence. But it starts with you, you know, with you as well. Um, last example, Sarah Wolf um, gained 40, year, 40 pounds in the past year. Uh, fear of judgment on, on your fitness level. You decided to go for it. It looks like you've lost 15 pounds on the 21 day fix and you've hit success club five or maybe 10, two months in a row. And you've been very transparent. The common thread with all these things is transparency 
authenticity and putting yourself out there, right? So I want, I want to do two things. Number one, I'm going to post a link to a video that I absolutely love, and it's called Just Do It by Art Williams. Do me a favor and, and, and watch that video, okay? Let me make sure I post it on here. That's the video there. I just posted that. Art Williams, he's called Just Do It. There's a longer version, the one that I sent. I think it's a six-minute video, okay? And then the second thing is, what is something that you can do today that can grow your confidence, right? I want, I want Rosa to point a few of the people and just say, and just ask them the question, right? Just today, this week, what is something that you feel you can do based on everything that I shared that you feel can grow your confidence, right? And, and let me give you some examples. It could be posting that before and after that you've been holding back on that you haven't posted. It could be, you know, it could be posting that you've started a business, that you're looking for people to join your empire, right? It could be anything. It could be the person that you just helped in your challenge group. Or it could be just doing your power hour and doing it with discipline. Because the one thing that I know is confidence starts with doing the activity, maintaining the activity, and keeping up the discipline of doing that over and over again. Because disciplines, I learned this very early on by my mentor, Jim Rohn. He said that disciplines affect each other. Disciplines affect each other, right? When you do something hard and you do it consistently, when you're done, you go, wow, I feel pretty good about myself. And it's very easy to go on to the next one and do it again, right? If we build a bunch of confident people in the Fit Republic, there's no question this is a top 10 team. This is a top 10 team. This is a top team in the whole United States and Canada. And it's going to be the sum of all the confidence in here on this team. It starts with Rosa, but she hands over the baton. And it's time for you to run and to run hard and to finish the year strong. So, Rosa, you know what? We, I was not always confident. I'm still working on my craft every single day. I'm, I'm accepting the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm accepting that I don't have all the answers. But you know what? I'm going to be the hardest worker in the, in, in the room. And I hope that everybody can commit to doing that for the balance of the year leading into next year. So, Rosa, I'll toss it back to you. would love to hear a few of the responses to my question earlier. Thank you so much, Arno. I have 100,000 notes and so much to continue to talk to the team about. I so appreciate your time. Um, okay, I'm totally going to put people on the spot here. Um, hi, Jacqueline, husband and baby. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, people are leaving the call. Okay. <laughs> They're like, oh no, don't call on me. No, They're like, don't looking, ask me. Uh, all right. <laughs> to the Anthony side. Williams, you and I have started to develop kind of a relationship on Facebook. Um, love your energy, by the way. So, talk to us about what you're going to do to increase your confidence. What's your big takeaway? What's the thing that you're going to change? I'll unmute you, hun. You're unmuted. Um, probably just putting myself out there more like you, more of, because I've lost 35 yet. I don't think people see that because I have so much to lose still, but the fact that I'm putting it out there and just that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? But just putting your journey out there more consistently. Yeah, kind of a story of it. Girl, 35 pounds is incredible. Every measure, every measure. I'm sorry. What was that? I've gone to every measure to lose weight and just to overall health. Awesome. Okay. So I'm totally going to keep you accountable to that. We'll chat. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, Karina says, and think how many people would be inspired by that loss. Totally. Exactly. By hearing that consistently for sure. Um, Michelle Shalapu. Hey girl. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Tell us. Oh my goodness, I'm just eating here. I have spinach to my teeth. That's okay. I'm eating healthy. I'm eating healthy. <laughs> What's your takeaway? What's the thing that you're going to do to increase your confidence? Honestly, this call was made for me. Um, thank you, Arno. I needed to hear those words. Um, my confidence has gone down lately. 
I've been bothered by different messages that I've gotten from people in this town and it's brought me down. So this just, this is exactly what I needed to hear. Who cares what these people think? I'm always preaching, telling people who cares what people think. Do what makes you happy. And lately I have been not practicing what I preach. So I am very thankful for this call. It just made me, it opened my eyes and just like made me think again, who cares? I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this for my family. I'm not doing it for all the other people out there except to help them. I want to help them and that is all. Okay, so give me a specific. Um, I'm just thinking about, yeah, yeah, like he said, like confidence is so important. And that's, it just rang a bell in my head because that's exactly what I've been lacking lately. My posts, they don't exceed confidence like they were. Um, I'm, I just, I need to build up my confidence again. My personal development has been slacking a little bit and right away, that is just a huge thing. People do your personal development because that is another reason why my confidence has gone down. Totally, it makes a huge difference. Okay, awesome, thank you, Michelle. Um, I'm also calling on Jenny Seitz. I'm unmuting you, you're unmuted. What are you gonna do this week, babe? It's a little loud in here, so bear with me. Sorry, what's the question, Rosa? What did you ask? The question is your top takeaway from the call, what are you gonna implement to increase your confidence? Okay, honestly, I really need to be diving into my personal development. I've kind of put it on the back burner because I've been working on a few other projects, but I really need to dive into that. And this call made me Hi, realize- Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Winter. But this call really was just like a, a shake to, you know, Jenny, this is important, get back on it. Awesome, okay. So we'll talk more about um, personal development. Um, Katie White. I um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Say word. Uh, I have two, I have two things. Of course, I have to say more. Um, but one thing is, I just had a conversation with my sister yesterday about personal development. Um, I've been doing it every day, but I've noticed in the last week or so, I'm kind of just doing it to do it. So um, I love that it was mentioned on here that if unless you're really practicing what it's telling you to do, then it's really not any beneficial to yeah. you. So that's one thing I'm going to do is start trying to dive in deeper with my, with my PD and not just scratching the surface. Okay. Um, and the second thing is I've noticed lately I'm starting to talk a lot more about what I do. I'm a teacher as well. So I found at first I would go into school. I'm in four different schools, so I have lots of contacts, but I would be a little bit nervous to talk about um, my beach body business on the side. Um, and I've noticed in the last two weeks, I'm starting to talk about it more and I'm having people approach me now. Uh, I had a lady today say, I heard you in the lunchroom. I'm just wondering about it. So I feel like I'm throwing that, that everything out there and I'm really confident when I talk to people in person. But if I look through my like page, I'm not talking enough about coaching and how much I love coaching and what it's brought to my life. So I think I'm going to try and take everything, you know, all the conversations that I have with people in the run of a day about coaching and try and start putting that in my posts as well. And my upline coach, Allie does this a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's, and so I need to start taking her lead because it's showing people, you know, really what's going on, I guess. So those are the two things that I'm going to start to implement. I love it. Thank you, Katie. All right, I'm gonna ask one more, Crystal Olson. Hey. Hey. I can so, hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. So I'm, I'm a little on the same page as Michelle. My confidence has totally bombed this last few months and I really haven't been doing anything i've been i delved into my personal development and i have been talking to people just not as many as i really need to be so that's where this call was awesome thank you very much and yeah same same as michelle just really need to get back on all right okay give me a specific that we can talk about next week like a Wow, I have no idea. It's something specific that you're going to do. Like, are you going to do your power hour, your three invites a day to start building that confidence back? 
yes, my three invites a day for sure. Okay. My, I've been really pushing my fitness at the right now. I mean, you guys have seen um, through the wellness, our little wellness community, I've been pushing my fitness, which is um, has been helping me, I guess, a little bit more. Um, yeah, but Halloween, my food fell off, so you know. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. We'll talk about those invites. And also girl, like you're rocking your fitness journey. That definition is off the hook and that stuff that you can talk about with authenticity, you're doing it mm -hmm. right. And that passion can come through when you're talking to other people, right? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. We will close out our call. Um, again, Arno, thank you so much. What an incredible call. I know my team got so much out of it and I did too. Thank you for having me. I'll just leave you with this. This guy was told he was always going to be a mid-level manager. He was told that he's wasting his time. He was told that Team Beachbody is just taken away from the main company, which is Beachbody. He's Carl Deichler. He's developed a one plus billion dollar company. He has no plans to stop. The one thing that he keeps doing is he has a bias towards action. When all else fails, when you've done your personal development, you've done it all, just shuffle your feet just keep moving just keep swimming you guys have kids that love nemo just keep swimming so i'll leave you with that rosa thanks for having me go feet republic all right bye guys bye everyone